Bro, um, I know it's been a minute. I was like, you know what? Hey, maybe we should do a topic. As uh, you know, as you know, you're you're one of my mentors, so I think maybe it's important we talk about the importance of having a mentor. You know, have you had a mentor? You know, the people uh, that have helped you kind of get to where you're at to a degree. I think the importance of mentorship is uh, finding someone. They might not have all the answers uh, as far as a textbook answer, but they have seen, you know, all right, here's the best way I can explain it to you. Anything you do makes you stronger. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Is that correct? So yeah, find someone, 100%. you know, when you go to a, uh, when you go to the gym and it's your first day there, you know, you, you don't look like you, you know, ate a small child for fucking breakfast, all swollen. <laughs> you know, you got to yeah. work your way up to that. And if that's what you yeah. want to look like, that's who you talk to. You don't talk to somebody who's fat and obese and say, hey, man, I want to get swole. When well, that fucker's going to say so, yeah. well, you know what I mean? So, yeah, the thing is with mentors, I think if you like a certain style of dog and the person's producing that style of dog, time after time and time again. Or if you want to learn about health, if you want to learn about structure, there, you can have more than one mentor. And, you know, for me, it's when you're looking to achieve something, you need to find someone in that realm who has achieved what you're looking to accomplish. I mean, it's that easy. So, you know, if you, like for you, you wanted to learn more about medicine. So that's where me and you became, you know, friends because you yeah. want to more about it i don't know shit i don't know anything as much as anybody thinks i do but i know enough to be dangerous but i talked to veterinarians <laughs> who've been veterinarians for 25 years and i i still call them to this day hey look what this this and this mean oh all right you just gotta do yeah. this why and i asked the question yeah. why why do i need to do that what's going on and so mentors come into play when you're trying to do better that's what it really does a hundred percent. And I, I agree because I know like for me, when, when I started, I just had the one mentor, but then, uh, like you said, yeah, I believe that you can have a mentor for like, like me, I have, uh, you know, mentor for medicine. I have a mentor for uh style of dog. I have a mentor for, you know, like, like you can have, have a mentor for business. You can have mentors for, for many different things. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't just apply to the dog game, but I, I, I agree with what you're saying in the aspect that, you know, why would you, why would you have a mentor teach you about your style of dog or your breed of dog if they've never bred? You know, like, how, how are you going to have a mentor that's a chihuahua breeder and tell you, you know, what you should be doing with your bullies? You know, you need to, in my opinion, you need to find someone who's more versed in your breed, you know, not that you can't learn from them, but I think ideally that's what you want to look for. I think 50, 50 Cent sums it up. You ain't going to take financial yeah. advice from a crackhead. <laughs> I mean, exactly. let's be real. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not trying to be ugly, but I mean, if you want a bully dog, you got to find somebody who's making bully dogs. Not, the, oops, I yeah. made a bully dog. No, like I intentionally made it and I'm making another one and then another one and another one, you know? Yeah, 100%. 100%. And actually, like, Yet again, like I said earlier in the video, like obviously you're one of my mentors, but like maybe um, and and I'll chime in and talk about my experience with my my mentors and, and my experience with you. But like, what are some of the things that your mentors did for you that helped you tremendously um, achieve the things that you wanted to achieve, or whatever the case it may be? So you guys can understand. Like, do you have any? You know, <laughs> I'll tell you who helped me along my way. But the thing is, is you know, back in my beginning era of starting dogs, we didn't have the internet like you guys did. We had VHSs. So we yeah. would get VHSs <laughs> of the dogs and we would have to watch them and make a decision off the VHSs because, you know, you guys, nowadays you got Instagram, you got Facebook, shit, you, can even, you have a phone where you can FaceTime a person. 
There barely yeah. was cell phones back then. If you had a cell phone back then, you was a rich fucker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now everybody, now everybody over the age of 12 has a cell phone. You know what I mean? So the thing is, is it was a different era for me coming up. And so um, when it came down to being mentored, my mentor, I'd be like, well, why do your dogs look different than mine? She, they would say, oh, because I have a better tail set or a better croup set or better angulation. And I'd be like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. And they would tell me what it meant or be like, why don't you just look it up? Like, Where the fuck am I supposed to look it up? We ain't got the internet. <laughs> so, you know, that's why I, I tend to read a little bit more of the books than I do the internet. I like reading, you know, Google helps me some where it gives me a book to read or if I even have the book sometime, I'm like, oh, shit, I got that book at home. Let me go home and see what they're referring to. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, they used to say RTFB, read the fucking book. That's what they used to say. <laughs> wow. I mean, but, uh, I mean, it made you better because you're not going to hire a plumber come to, to come fix your electrical work. Yeah. So if you're a reader, you need to understand certain things. And, and what you were saying to me earlier about a, achieving an eye for a dog. I will tell you in my personal That's a big opinion, one. I think an eye for a dog some people have a natural eye for a dog and then there's people who have a trained eye for a dog. Yeah. So there's, there's different types of people, you know what I mean? Um, some people just have a natural knack at breeding dogs. And I think I'm probably one of them because even when I didn't understand all the terminologies, I still made decent dogs, or, you know, bully dogs. Um, but now they say that the more, you know, the better you, the more, you know, the better you do. And so now I know a little too much sometimes and where a dog might be amazing to you, all I see is his faults. Yeah. So it, does, it, it does ruin it for me a little bit sometimes because there's some dogs that are like absolutely gorgeous. But the only thing I could see is his shoulders are a little too laid back or too too up and under. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. Well, you're like, yeah. what? <laughs> mm -hmm. So an eye for a dog is one thing. Having good mentors, mine, some of my mentors were people like Jamie Sweet, Joey Rita, um, Malik Lasor. These are people like, uh, they were all at the Beast of the East with me. Um, gotcha. Cord Eads. Um, these are some of the people that when I had questions, and the reason, one, they were my mentors because they liked the same style of dogs that I did. Or I liked the style of dogs that they were producing or had. Two, they had been doing it longer than me. So they knew tricks of the trade. They knew um, little tidbits, you know, like I'll give you an example of what I mean. But when a dog didn't have good milk back in the day, we would give them beer. We would mm. put beer on their food and it would produce more milk because of, I would imagine, because of the yeast and the beer. You know what I mean? I've heard that now, before. Yeah. yeah, where now we have thousands of different medicines that we can do. Equidone, Marticon, well, I forget what the other one is. It starts with an M. Um, oxytocin and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know I mean? We Our technology is more advanced than it was back then. I mean, we used to ship semen and egg whites. <laughs> Man. You know, anywhere. Damn. Hawk extender. Look at Hawk extender compared to egg whites. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, but, they I get what knew, you're but they knew what the tricks of the trade because you, you know, this stink. You start breeding dogs tomorrow. We're, we'll use something else. You want to start working on cars tomorrow. You don't know the difference between a carburetor and a motherfucking battery. I mean, <laughs> it's being facetious, but the reality is you don't know the difference between fuel injection number. You know, yeah, fucking know what the hell I'm talking about when it comes to cars, but you don't know the difference. <laughs> I Somebody told saying. you, hey, yeah. go get me the fuel injection wrench. you would be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get some, uh, what is that, headlight fluid? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So th these things, sometimes when you align yourself with people that have like-minded goals, it helps. It really does. It speeds up the process. Yeah. For an example, a baseball team. My son, he's nine years old and he's starting baseball. And I told him, hey, just watch the other players sometimes and just see how they do things. You can learn and you can learn sometimes by just observing other people. Yeah, a hundred percent. And uh, I back to like what you were saying about the whole like developing an eye. I I like I think like you said, some people have a natural eye, natural eye for dogs, 
And I think that, for example, other people, uh, that, that's why one of the biggest things that I'm an advocate for now is, and it's actually something you taught me, was the whole like breed type tracker, you know, like um, rating your dogs on a one to 10. And it may not just be on like as a whole, it may be, you know, certain things that you want to rate on a one to 10. And then that generates, you know, what the dog should be rated as a whole. But like it then had me thinking, you know what? Let me take what I'm rating my dogs at and take someone who I know has a phenomenal eye for dogs, like, you know, like like our friend, you know, and, and my mentor, like June, for example. And what does he think of my dog or this dog on a one to 10? Or what do you think of this particular dog on a one to 10? And, and compare that to where I see a dog, for example, and what do I rate that dog on a one to 10? And how close am I to the people that I'm looking up to you know what i'm saying and and i I feel like that'll help also yeah that's one way to look at it you know understanding type is not as easy as people think it is understanding type it comes down to just seeing different dogs with different features and understanding what you want because uh standards are made up of descriptive words with adjectives in front of them you know robust we'll just use the word robust and i know i've said this before but robust to me and robust to someone like your son is two total different things yeah. you know i mean um, yeah robust to me versus robust to i was gonna say june but shit june's got thicker dogs than i do but you know what i'm saying like if you look yeah. at someone, for an example if someone's five you know five five and weighs 150 pounds and you have someone who's six two and weighs 250 pounds and you ask them what is your definition of robust i can promise you the six two motherfuckers not going to say five five and 160 pounds i can tell you that yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> where the five yeah. five dude's going to say the six two dude that's you know 250 that's a robust motherfucker bro he's yeah. but he doesn't yeah. look at himself as slow it is a subjective term because yep. you know what you consider spicy i might consider mild what I consider mild, my son might consume, ex- I mean, oh my God, where's the water? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's subjective, you know what I mean? So some of these words that are in the, the standards or some of the words that people throw around when it, in, in regards to type, um, we misunderstand them sometimes. And it just comes down to seeing a bunch of dogs and understanding certain things. But for me, this is what I told you before, I think the silhouette, is for your breed for any breed without a job let me rephrase that so with a dog that does not have a job we're not talking about rat terriers we're not talking about you know afghan hounds who have jobs we're talking about companion breeds like american bullies exotics oldies a lot of people are going to say well they're a working breed what the fuck job do they have they don't have a job (laughs) so that makes them a companion anyway When you have a companion breed, I believe your silhouette is your most important feature of type. And the reason yeah. that is, in my opinion, uh, is because without that silhouette, without that, you know, if I give you a silhouette of a, a German Shepherd, no hair, just a black silhouette, I can guarantee you'll guess it. Yeah. The, the fucking dog didn't move, but you guessed what breed of dog it was. If I gave you a silhouette of a boxer, and we'll just take a boxer for an example, you'll see it right away. Why? The deep chest, the steep front, the short fat face, you know, short muzzle, kind of narrow rear end, what's really short back. Those are the things that you would see and you would immediately think, oh, that's a boxer. That's the same thing. You know, the dog hasn't moved a muscle yet. So without it moving a muscle, you have to be able to identify it. Now, same for me with uh, the American Bully, I think it's imperative that you know, and I would imagine the exotic, because it's, I mean, it's a derivative of the American Bully. It needs to be able to be identified in what class it belongs in. For an, you know, for an example, is it a boy or girl? If your girl, I mean, if your boy looks like a girl, for me, I don't even give it a second look personally. Um, Is it a pocket? Is it an exotic? Is it an XL? Does it look like an American bully? Just, you know what I mean? Just different heights. 
And then is it thick? Is it robust? Does it have a large head? Does it have good bone, forward shoulders? The dog doesn't have to move. Like it needs to be able to move some for some people. And I get it. And it dogs has to be able yeah. to not be lame. Don't get me wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But the problem is a lot of people think that they have amazing type. And I just look at it like it's average because I'm comparing it against a dog like Rocky. You know, you've seen Rocky. So, yeah. you know, when you're comparing against a dog, not necessarily comparing, but when you're saying, I've seen that these dimensions are possible when you're looking at how tall are your dogs? I couldn't even tell you. I think, how tall is um, a, an exotic? How tall is an exotic for the most part? Just give me a number. I don't know. Uh, off the top of my head, I would say maybe like, I don't know, like around 13 inches. Okay, so if I said 13 inches and 13 pounds, you wouldn't be impressed, right? 13 inches and 13 pounds? Yeah, you wouldn't be impressed. <laughs> I didn't I'm even saying? think I heard that right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I said 13 inches and 75 pounds, you would be, yeah, see? You, yeah. you perk up. All right, let me see the rest of the dog. I like the stats. Now, me and you both know a lot of people lie about stats or they don't know yeah. how to measure yeah. a dog or weigh a dog, obviously. But, you know, but... When it comes to stats, they're your first indicator that it's going to be something that you might be interested in seeing. Then when you see the dog and say it's like fucking 84 inches long, it's like, never mind. <laughs> Fucker yeah. can't, he can't weigh enough for me. You know what I mean? So yeah, we'll just take, we'll, I mean, look at it. Look at the difference between a Dachshund hound or a wiener dog for some people and a Basset hound. They're both short dogs with short owners, you know, all bowed out. But look at the difference. There's a huge difference in mass. Yeah, that's true. Some that's people true. might say a Dachshund hound is thick, but then some people say a Basset hound is thick. You know what I mean? That's yeah. perspective. And that's what people have to understand. Some people are looking for the Dachshund hound and some people are looking for the Dach, you know, the, you know. The, yeah, the, uh, I, I, I think it, it goes back to what you're saying, where honestly, I think a lot of it comes down to exposure like seeing different dogs whether they're in your breed out of your breed whatever just just yeah just like not closing yourself off to the dogs that you may have seen at a local show like actually really getting out there and seeing what's out there i, I think that's huge i mean just think about what what is something else you're into you're into cars you're into anything else that you're into other than dogs? yeah I'm, I'm into guns <laughs> okay for an example we'll just take a gun for an example if somebody brings out just a regular old schmegular uh, nine millimeter, right? And says, oh, yeah. look, you're like, oh, that's cute. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden somebody brings out a desert eagle for the very first time you've ever seen a desert eagle. You know what I mean? You're like, holy fuck. Yeah. It's like a fucking yeah. candy, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, and you yeah. put them next to each other. It's legitimately like a cannon next to this little pea shooter. And you're like, yeah. fuck, that's what, okay. <laughs> And it's the same concept with dogs. It's the same thing. You know, once you see what's possible or what yeah. could be, if that makes any sense to say. It's, it, it's tough because I feel like with certain, well, let me rephrase. Like with the exotic bully, the breed I'm in, it's what I call it is kind of to a degree like a subjective breed because there really is no standard. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, there's variations of exotic bully that i mean you could put three exotic bullies in front of me and they could all look relatively different one can represent more of a terrier i guess type of american bully another one could be more overdone bulldog like you know like like crossbones and then you could have a like a dog that's somewhat kind of in between and all three of them are are put together very well you know what i'm saying i think for the exotic bully I don't, I don't quite think the silhouette has been somewhat established. You know, I think it's, like I said, I really think it's, it's, it's subjective, you know, look at, we'll just use Juna's example, the dogs that he has, uh, he had five years ago, or like a dog, like, you know, maybe that he would have been promoting like paintball looks very different from, I don't know if you've seen the video recently of the dog he has King Chaos. Silhouette is night and day difference. And that's the other thing too, the exact bully moves so the the it, it, it's changing so quickly it's too fast you know 
Yeah, it's evolving too fast. So with a breed like that, it's kind of tough. Personally, me, I, I like the openness to creativity. And I think we've kind of talked a little bit about that. You know what I'm saying? But with other breeds, like what I tell people almost is like, what the best thing you could do is like go to some of these higher end shows and see some of the top representations of your breed just to get an idea of what's the closest thing to maybe the standard, you know, and see where you stand, how much more you have to go and what are the things that you want to add to what you already see. If say you went to like, I don't know, like a Westminster show or something. And well, so like like a a or something. It's almost like a, yeah. they have car shows. Like, all right, let's go back. They have car shows for every form of car, even concept cars. So mm. basically look at, look at dog breeding in the same sense you got your retros you know your hot rod your muscle cars from the 60s you know in the 70s and then you got your you know your first i don't know nothing about cars but anyway all the way up into I know what you're saying like you cars, cars. And, and, and basically yeah. your concept cars is where you say let me go see what's out there dog wise and see if it's what i want to push for or I'm happy right here. Now, when it comes to dogs, yeah. people have to understand one thing. You build your own market. So if you like a certain style of dog, build your market around it. But don't, for me, I don't need to tell somebody else that they are doing it wrong because this doesn't in line with what I'm doing. I don't feel the need yeah. to say that, You know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of, you know, certain some people's dogs, <laughs> but I don't feel the need to anything ugly about them. I'm just like, so yeah, like, you're hilarious. You, you you put a post out there. You said something along the lines like, oh, yeah. I think it was like, you don't walk you up know to an ugly person say. and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know you're ugly today. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Nobody does that. Nobody says, hey, I just wanted to let you know you got the ugliest fucking kid I've ever seen. <laughs> Nobody does that. Like, really? Who the fuck does that? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. So they, you know, but they do that about ugly. dogs online. Well, they do it online. They don't do it really in person. Yeah. You know, some people will put their mitts on you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the thing is, is I just don't feel the need. If I don't particularly like something, I'm, I don't like dogs with long hair. Does that mean I think all dogs with long hair should be fucking waked off the safe face of the earth? No, it's just not for me. I don't want to have hair all over me. I don't want hair yeah. all over my house. Yeah. It's not my thing. No, you're right. I just room that shit. You're, you're right. And, and now um, that actually backtracking right so um because initially we did start this episode about mentors right so i do have a question for you right uh so how did you establish uh like say you say and i don't know if it went if it happened this way but say you saw somebody like a jamie sweet or like a joe rita and you wanted to be mentored like how how did you how did you seek out these mentors how did you like Establish. Well, I never, I never yeah. said, "Hey, will you take me under your wing?" No, that ain't what I did. I just, yeah. you know, I bought dogs from them. I spoke with them. What I do is, I study their movement in the sense of, let me see how you breed dogs, so I can see how you achieve this outcome. And then I'll even ask sometimes, like, "Hey, not, I'm just wanting to know why did you breed anger management to this dog?" What was the purpose? And did you achieve it? Yes, this is what I was looking to do. And then that way you can see how a person thinks. I can say like, all right, why did you bring this dog to that dog? Uh, I don't see it. So I don't understand why you did it, but all right, that's not who I want to be around. When people ask me questions like, hey, why'd you breed Rocky to that, you know, the litter I have off Rocky? All right, one, she had the shoulder set that I needed. Um, she had the croup set that I needed. She was double black. He's black. Uh, you know, I'm, I just needed her shoulders and her croup set. She is a Kaiser kid, so I was hoping that it would all find itself. That's why. There was a method to the madness. And did it work? Yes. So now, you know, when people can't distinctly tell you that kind of stuff, there isn't no rhyme or reason. Uh, I'm not following you or even paying you any bill after that. You're just shooting. Yeah. you got to you got darts with no board on the wall. You're just throwing them at the wall. You know what I mean? That's not what I, I agree. Yeah. I, you know, I think so you're looking for people chime... who have a method. And you try I, to study the method to see if that method no, you're good. 
could work for you. You know what I mean? I think to chime into what you're saying, I agree. Like in the sense that you have to use discernment because not everybody's built to be a mentor. You know, like I, I get what you're saying. You have to have discernment because some people, they fell into shit, I guess is what the saying is. Like some people, maybe they just got a, a, a nice looking dog, but or they purchased a nice looking dog and, and they don't know any rhyme or reason how uh, they produce this specific dog, or whatever. So I get what you're saying. Like you need to uh, find someone who 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 knows what they're doing in the first place. Well, you I, I want to say, yeah, mm-hmm. you'll get people. What they'll do is uh, they give you. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a set of porcelain veneers. You know what I mean? It's it's not real, but it is real. So what they'll do is they'll get just hypothetically. We'll take. What's the boy I like at your house? A form. Oh, wishbone. Wishbone. All right. So you mm-hmm. take wishbone. I like him. So some people, what they'll do is they'll be like, all right, well, cool. Let's find all of wishbone's, you know, cousins and and the mo- ants and breed all them same dogs to crossbones. You know what I mean? They'll just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. They didn't. They didn't make. They they just made chicken noodle soup instead of regular fucking egg noodles. They put this kind of noodle in it. You know what I mean? Everything else is the same. They just change yeah. a small yeah. thing, and they just keep. Yep. Re- you know, it's the same recipe. They didn't start from scratch and say, "Hey, you know what? Instead of ve- instead of chicken noodle soup, let's make vegetable soup." No, that's mm. not what they did. And I, there's nothing wrong with it, but you know, they're not reinventing the wheel. They're not building blocks. They're yeah. just taking pieces and you know like they took it doesn't take real skill i'm not saying it didn't take skill but that was luck and what it what they did now is they're you know raising the bar uh, about their luck because all they're doing is instead of the same mom and dad it's the same dad but the mom's sister like wow you didn't reinvent anything i wonder what you're gonna get yeah yeah i get what you're saying i get what you're saying um so uh, back to like what you're saying though, right? Like with, with mentors, because it's, it's as, as funny as it is, like prime example is like me and you, when we first spoke, it was, it wasn't like maybe what the people listening to this now thought it was like, at first we were just like, we didn't, re- it was like, eh. like it was, you know what I'm saying? We didn't just instantly hit it off and you were like, Hey, uh, you want, you want me to be your mentor? And, and I was like, yeah, be, you know what I'm saying? It was nothing like that. I think the, the one of the biggest things is if the best advice I could give to the people watching this probably is if you're looking for a mentor um, and sometimes a mentor may come that you like, how do I put this? Like it may be someone that you weren't expecting to become your mentor. You know, like me and you, we spoke in a separate conversation that had nothing to do with really like, for example, us becoming friends or anything like that. And then over the conversations that we had, I think one of the biggest things is a mentor wants to see that you're serious about whatever it may be that they would even consider mentoring you in, you know? I think if I uh, was very, um, if I didn't, you know, we didn't have a common thing with like the medication and things like that, I think maybe our relationship would be very different, you know? Um, so I think that's one thing, a mentor. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say? For me, uh, everybody's always saying mentor. I, I, I don't know. I just try to help people. I'm not a real big person when it comes to being somebody's perfect mentor. I'll answer your questions. I mean, guys, I don't know if you know, it's 1030 at night. You guys don't know that. (laughs) It's 1030 at night. I've been up since 6 a.m. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, you know, us to get these in is not as easy as it once was. You know what I mean? So um, I don't really have a whole lot of time to talk on the phone no more. You know what I mean? So, um, that's just it. You know, when I do find, you know, when we, when I do talk on the phone, I got to make sure it counts because, you know, I have other obligations with my son and my daughter playing sports now. So um, it's not easy. You know what I mean? Like from 6 a.m. to fucking 8 p.m. at night. And same here, like people hit me up and they ask all kinds of questions. And it's like, I guess like this is our way of being mentors online or just trying to help people really. I, I never set out to do this to be like someone's mentor. I was, I just, Hey, you know what? I have this information. Why keep it all in my head? Why can't I just, you know, it the golden rule, you know, just, to, uh, you know, you guys don't understand. We, I don't know about him. I can speak for myself. I don't really have the time to check messages all the time. 
So there's days where I do have time, you know, like Fridays, I don't have to do anything for the kids. So Friday's my day, you know what I mean? That's, that's really all my, my only day after work that I can just relax, you know? Um, but that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. It might be easier to comment on these videos where Gina or Sandra can at least ask us questions like, hey, there's this guy who's really asking a question, guys. I don't know the answer. Hey, boom, boom, boom. It's easier that way for us because yeah. he's running a business. I'm running a business. I have a full-time job. Yeah. I got kids in sports. You know what I mean? So, and that's what people don't understand. Uh, being a mentor, uh, you know, what people want, is, I guess, in a mentor and what we can provide isn't 100% what they're looking for, as I should say. Yeah. And we can do this. Yeah. We can give you what our information in our head in these half an hour, you know, um, segments, but being on the phone with you eight hours a day, it's just not feasible. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and like I said, like, I also, like, I, I think. Well, not only that, I mean, like my I mentor said, wasn't yeah. on the phone with me for eight hours. She told me to get a book and read this book, read this yeah. book, read that book, read this yeah. book. You know what I mean? Like, all right, yeah. well, cool. She'd be like, all yeah. right, well, bye. <laughs> Yo, Jay, listen, I love Jamie to death, but fucking 25 years ago, she was. She's pretty cutthroat. Hey, read Yo, the book. Get my, back <laughs> my mentor was the same way. Like literally, people don't realize. For me, I had to literally. I was literally willing to to donate my time to going and helping him clean up poop, and 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 just basically volunteering myself just to get his time to be able to get. And and it wasn't yet again. Like it wasn't um anything other than. I didn't even look at it as a mentorship at the time. I was just like, hey, you know what? Hey, if I help this guy out, he's going to want to be able to like kind of teach me so I can kind of get started on the right foot, you know? So um, I'm not saying that's what you guys have to do with us. You know, I come over here and help me clean up poop. But um, when you but do what find a mentor, what I, you're I, implying I, is sometimes you got to do something a little bit unorthodox or something a little bit more than call me when you need something. Yeah. You know, I know that Gina, my wife, she has some kind of uh, mentorship program that she does with, you know, I, and obviously you'll get my answers and undivided attention. So stuff like that. Hey, promote that real quick. Promote that real, real quick since we're on but here. But I'm just so saying it's they, like compensation. That, you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, yeah. everybody that's going to watch us understands that you get paid by the hour at your job. And if you want my undivided attention and you want my help, to where I can help you make better dogs or help you learn what's in my little old peanut brain up here, you know, you know, it would be easier, obviously, to get paid to do it, right? Now I'm obligated. No, you're, you're right. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. and it's not like an, in a negative obligation, but it is an obligation now because you've paid me for a service and now I have to, you know, I guess you know, I'm obligated to it now, I guess, right? I, but the thing yeah. is, just pick a mentor. Let's get back to what that mentorship is just yeah. picking someone like-minded, like goals, and will and willing to help. And and, and getting the results they want. Walk into it. They don't just have a unicorn. Yeah. 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 Like June, for example, like he's another one that yet yet again, he's a great guy. But I I I bred to him a good amount of times. Like I remember like the first few times like I, I did breedings with him and and I did a few more breedings than maybe I normally would have wanted to do with his dogs. But it was like when I would go over there, it was like almost like I'm I would take advantage of the time. It was really more so like, hey, whatever information I could soak up, whatever like he's he's showing the direction that he's going in with his dog, so on and so forth, like let me take advantage of this now, you know? So it was like, I was purposely like, instead of breeding to at the time, like dogs that were local and, and other breeders, I really couldn't get any information from or, or whatever the case may be. I was like, let me, you know, let me spend money with him so that I could hopefully get more than just, you know, the breeding, but some information um, and so on and so forth to the point that I built a report with him where I could just call him on a cell now and ask him any question. But, you know, somebody like that's not just going to do that overnight. I had to, spend money with him um and i'm not pushing like hey i you know i don't need any money from you guys on this video i'm just saying like you know i was like you said willing to do anything unorthodox to be able to build a rapport with the people that i wanted to be able to um establish relationships with that i feel like i could learn from in the long run you know 
So that's just, you know, I mean, my more, two cents and advice. You're more inclined to help your clients. I mean, yeah. if you're a Ford client and you have a Chevy, or if you're a Ford client, you're not going to call a Chevy dealer and say, hey, I got a tick in my motor. No, they're not. Yeah. Gonna, what are they going to tell you? Call the fucking Ford dealer. That's where you got that clunker from. <laughs> so that's just the thing, though. You know what I mean? So if you're my yeah. client, I don't have any problem helping you. That's just the truth. How 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 do they find that mentorship? What do they what where do they gotta go to find the mentorship? It's just it's just if the they do want to hit you up. I think she got it on the website, kristengina.com. Okay. I know for me, I don't necessarily have like uh where they can well actually I do have it. So I have it where they can call and like book an appointment and we can do a little bit of a mentorship. I know for me I also have like the community thing I started where it's like uh, uh, people can sign up and it's like weekly we do the Zooms and stuff. You know, you were a part of one. Um, yeah. and, and then I just recently finished shooting. They're just editing it now. Um, a, a course, you know, kind of taking people from how to choose their dogs all the way up until pups are born, going to their forever homes and everything in between. AIs, um, progesterone testing, the list goes on. So that course will be up breeders, university so i mean the tools are out i feel like i feel like the tools are out there more than ever now and just in my opinion i don't know how you feel about it i feel like there wasn't any educators like you said on youtube doing what we were doing you know five to ten years ago at least to my knowledge you know yeah i mean they definitely are you know what i mean and you know the thing is is with um modern technology we're speeding everything up quickly so it's a good yeah. first. Man, I got to get off here, guys. I am tired. All right. Yeah, I hear you, man. So I think we hit our half hour. Yep, we hit our half hour. So anyways, guys, as always, we hope this information is helpful. We hope it's useful. Um, if you didn't take anything from this, you guys, I mean, hey, there's mentorship things that are out there now. You can check those things out. Um, hey, each video we do every single week is essentially a mentorship to you guys. So the tools are there. Just take advantage of them, you know? So anyway, Chris, I'll let you get to sleep. I know you're tired, man. And uh, hopefully we can do this again next week. All right, guys? All right. My man.